Hello and welcome to SGXR where we explore the world of extended realities like virtual reality gaming. Today we're diving deep into Blade and Sorcery aka Blade and Sorcery Nomad. Blade and Sorcery is a medieval fantasy virtual reality action role playing game where players engage in close quarter combat and cast spells using motion controllers. The game features a physics based combat system that allows players to perform realistic and dynamic sword and magic attacks as realistic as magic attacks can be, uniquely interacting with the environment and various objects. Players can choose from various weapons and spells to suit their playstyle and explore a variety of environments. From some sprawling castle to a dark dungeon, Blade and Sorcery aims to provide an immersive and highly interactive gaming experience for players, allowing them to experience the thrill of medieval combat and magic in a virtual world. Developed and published by Warp Frog, the game was first released as Early Access title on December 11th, 2018 on the Steam platform and has since received multiple updates and upgrades. Though as today, it still sits as an Early Access game on Steam and its lower poly counterpart, Blade and Sorcery Nomad, sits on the Quest Store. The game was developed to provide an immersive physics-based fighting experience in VR and has become one of the most popular VR games available, receiving positive reviews and attention from players and critics alike. Warp Frog started as a one-man band, but with a passionate and creative developer, it has since become much more. Over the years, Blade and Sorcery has continued to evolve and expand, adding new weapons, maps, and features to enhance the player's experience. However, they are still a small studio, as the game likes to remind every player as they enter the game. The gameplay mechanics focus on making combat as realistic and immersive as possible with a heavy emphasis on player control and physical interactions. Players engage in melee combat versus various enemies and can use various weapons. The game features a unique combat system that considers the player's position, movement, and weapon weight and type. Players also use their weapons to block, dodge, and parry enemy attacks. In addition to melee combat, players can also engage in archery, and use a variety of spells and special abilities to defeat their foes. The combat mechanics in Blade and Sorcery are a significant part of the game's appeal. Players can engage in intense battles using a variety of weapons. Players have complete control over the movements of their weapons and can perform various actions such as slashing, thrusting, blocking, with an adrenaline-like slowdown motion feature that allows players more reaction time and increased strength. The combat system in Blade and Sorcery is physics-based, which means that the movements of weapons and characters are determined by real-world-like physics calculations. This leads to high realism and immersion, as players must carefully aim and take their times for their attacks to be effective in battle. Another important aspect of the combat mechanics is the magic system. Players have limited magic and health abilities. They must manage their resources carefully to avoid being exhausted and unable to defend themselves. This adds a layer of strategy to the battles, as players must choose their action wisely to conserve or stay alive using food, potions, or just not getting hit. As the game title suggests, the magic system allows players to shoot fireballs, lightning, and force choke or throw enemies and objects. Various combos when paired with weapons or using both hands. While some games may shy away from this to create a more immersive game, Magic in this way sets the game apart from other competitors. Your character is crazy strong, and one further game mechanic is your ability to toss enemies and climb almost anything. We'll talk about that more in the physics-based movement section. Character customization in Blade and Sorcery allows players to customize their characters in the very beginning. Players can select different hairstyles, facial features, and clothing to make their characters fairly unique. The game also features a variety of weapons and armor, which can be equipped to enhance the character's abilities in combat. These customization options allow the players to tailor their characters to their playstyle, making the gameplay experience more immersive and personalized. Currently, the only game mode is a sandbox, and you can only go so far with that, but we'll discuss that later. In the game, players can access various weapons and gear, including swords, shields, maces, axes, bows, and more. This is where the physics-based combat system differs from some other games with similar combat. The weapons in this game have unique stats and abilities such as weight, speed, and damage, and players can supercharge their in-combat weapons to suit their playstyle. The particular movement style that the weapons have makes you feel the weight of those weapons. While most weapons don't chop, they can still be very satisfying, 
and dismember it is an option. One prominent example is if you played Blade and Sorcery Nomad, the mobile quest version. The weapons don't tend to stick. This is probably because of the stress on the hardware and the more rigorous calculations that that would cause. However, the ability to store small items on your person and weapons all around your body is intuitive and makes your ability to customize your gameplay very fun, even if there are limitations. Again, Blade and Sorcery is set in a medieval fantasy setting and features environments such as ruins, caves, and dungeons. The game features several game modes, such as a sandbox where players can experiment with the game's mechanics and weapons, and the story mode, which is supposed to be coming in 2023, as well as a horde mode to test your skills in various arenas. The test campaign story, Crystal Hunt mode map available currently in Blade and Sorcery and the Nomad Edition, is procedurally generated. That means each time the player enters a map, it will differ from the last time, which greatly enhances the replayability. You can see sliders for difficulty and length, aka how big the map will be and how hardcore and armored the enemies will be, which is fantastic. The skill tree and other 1.0 final release projects will be an excellent addition whenever those hit as the progress continues. We'll talk about the roadmap at the end of this. The game's physics engine allows objects to interact realistically for the most part, including gravity, weight, friction, and momentum. This means that the movements will look and feel natural as you act and you swing your weapon or throw an object. The physics engine also affects the character's movements and animations, providing a more immersive experience for the player, allowing you to bully your way through most things. While every once in a while you do run into some sort of weird bug or physics computing glitch, it's surprising that even with those things, the game doesn't crash completely. On top of all of that, they've allowed you to climb and move around many maps, allowing you to explore more than you might expect. While climbing points are also built into the maps, they don't shout at you with various markers. They're there to just help you along, and most of the time you can magic your way around them if you'd like. It's pretty clear that the game developers have put a lot of attention into the environments. They're designed with great attention to detail, attempting to keep most objects to a certain minimum. This is likely because of the high computing intensity of too much physics going on at the same time. Lighting and physics-based movements all work together to create a decently immersive virtual world. All that you would expect from an indie studio. The small details of what they put in matter a lot, and they obviously need the computing budget for more ridiculous interactions. For Warfrog Studios' small size, it is clear that they are taking advantage of the Unity engine, which provides advanced tools and features for creating high-quality graphics. The game features detailed environments with how they use the lighting and shadows that seem mostly baked in to keep the processing low. Intensive particles around magic spells and weapons add a heightened level of immersion to the gameplay and are well managed as to not be overwhelming. And while the Quest version Nomad has a lower level of effects and fidelity, that doesn't distract from their use, but instead highlights the judicial use of these for maximum effect. Blade and Sorcery has a very active and robust modding community, with players able to create custom modifications to the game using the Unity engine and tools provided by the developers. Warfrog wants to build in more modding tools as well so that players can create new weapons, armors, maps, and game modes and modify their existing content to be more what they would like. The game has a large and dedicated modding community on websites such as Nexus Mods, where players can upload and download mods created by others. Again, the game's developers have been so supportive of the modding community with the release of modding tools and ongoing updates to the engine to support custom content creation. With such a large and active modding community, many popular mods have become available, such as the Outer Rim, a total conversion mod for Star Wars for Blade and Sorcery, including a variety of lightsabers and blasters, a medieval mega pack with over 300 plus realistic weapons of various European origin, dismemberment, act making dismemberment easier, and a custom avatar framework for making custom NPCs supporting blood decals, dismemberment, and friendly NPCs. Modding communities can change over time and different mods and maps may become popular at different times. So if you're interested, I've put a link in the doobly-doo or you can just go to nexusmods.com and look it up yourself if you're interested. Because of the small development team and the community around it, mods have become an integral part of what Blade and Sorcery can be. They can enhance the gameplay experience, improve graphics, customization, and fix bugs, 
but some of the drawbacks might be compatibility issues, game stability, and definitely security concerns, and especially conflicts with other mods if you use multiple of them. It's important to be cautious when using mods in Blade and Sorcery, and to only download mods from trusted sources to minimize potential risks. Blade and Sorcery is a physics-based VR medieval combat fantasy role-playing game and features realistic movements and combat mechanics. It offers detailed graphics and environments, advanced lighting and particle effects, and a modding community. The game is also known for its immersive gameplay and allows players to gauge in hand-to-hand -hand combat, close quarters combat, archery, and spell casting using a variety of weapons and gear. The modding community provides additional customization options and the ability to create custom maps and mods, which is always the icing on the cake. For players looking to get the most out of the game, it's recommended to have a VR headset and a dedicated gaming computer to experience the game's full potential. Also, exploring the modding community can bring new, unique experiences into the game. In conclusion, Blade and Sorcery offers an exciting and challenging VR gaming experience with a strong focus on realism. Players who enjoy action games in VR and exploring different possibilities within this game will find it way more enjoyable. If you find yourself without the ability to use a decent gaming computer, it's okay. The Mobile Quest hardware, while certainly underpowered by comparison, will still give you a compelling gameplay experience. Warfrog has done an admirable job of keeping everybody up to date on what's going on. This is the updated roadmap for Blade and Sorcery as of October 21st, 2022. Links in the doobly-doo below. It mentions several updates, such as Update 12 and Update 1.0 that are soon planned to bring features such as swimming, breakables, dynamic music system, moddable dungeon systems, new weapons, and new armor, among other things. The roadmap also mentions the estimated dates that are subject to change based on player feedback and development. After the release of 1.0 and the release of the full game, DLC and or major extensions are planned. Some additional features are also mentioned, but with no promises, such as two-handed weapons for NPCs and new spells and player customization options. The roadmap concludes by mentioning that some of those features may or may not be included in the game. We appreciate your time, and if you've enjoyed this content and would like to see more from us, please subscribe and share and do all of the things. More importantly to us, let us know if you enjoyed this, if it was informative, and thank you for your time.